This is a quick video showing you a little bit of the inside of a Ford Model A uh, starter motor. And what I did was I wanted to paint mine. Uh, in retrospect, I'm wondering if that was the best idea, <laughs> considering all the things I had to take apart. But anyway, I wanted to paint it, so I took it off the bell housing. And I'm not going to do a comprehensive rebuild or anything like that, but just in case you're curious, as I was, about what some of the insides look like, so let me start off with, um, this is the case, the outer case. So this side here is what mounts up uh, flush against your bell housing. You'll want a clean connection there. I'll show you a little more on that later. Um, if it's rusty or pitted, sand it down. And this is the front plate. It holds the brushes on the inside here. Those are brushes in there. This big copper uh, connector here, this, uh, this piece is where when your starter rod, so here this, you probably recognize it with this on here. So when I put this on here like that, uh, when you push down on the floor to start the engine, there's that rod and it makes a connection here. <clears throat> and optionally, I recommend this for all Model A owners, this is an inline fuse, it's an aftermarket parts. So what you do is, this connects up on the plate here, where that starter rod connects, and uh, it uses the same screws. What it does is, this is a little fuse here, I forget the amp, is it like 10 amp or something? Anyway, small fuse here in line, so if your wires ever get overheated, overloaded in your electrical system, uh, this will go out before things start melting, which I have had happen in the past, it's not fun. The uh, one thing to point out, if you are going to paint it, so what I did was I took it off and I painted it and sanded it and painted it and for the most part it came out okay. One thing to keep in mind, there's a, it might be hard to see in the video, but this little piece, this plate, is not metal, it's plastic, it's meant to be an insulator. So when I was sanding, you'll see some marks there. I was, <laughs> I thought it was metal, I just started sanding it. I didn't realize that. So if you damage it, not a big deal. You can buy aftermark parts for this. Uh, what else to show you here? This outer uh, band, uh, this band goes on the, uh, the cover band. It goes on the outside and there's a screw here which you'll take apart to loosen that and it comes off. This piece which goes inside here. It's actually several pieces. So if you, uh, you'll have to detach these two long screws. So these long screws you'll take from the uh, outside plate here. So you'll see these, uh, there's one there and one there. And they go all the way, you'll see the length of these. They go all the way the length of the case and they actually screw into the front plate here, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, they're easy to take off. You can see on this plate down here, there's uh, two tiny screw holes, so like one there and one here. And that's where they connect to hold the case onto this plate here. Uh, this is called a, con, what's the word for this? A commutator. That's not a word I use often. So commentator here and this copper part at the end is called the uh, I'm sorry that is a commentator and this is the armature so <laughs> I'm not an electrician as you can guess this is the armature commentator and then this here is the Bendix drive and one thing to point out about this uh, if you're going to comprehensively test the starter motor you take the drive out and you'd hook up the battery electric to it and test that it spins okay. What you can do is, um, if it, uh, you can do like a quick test to make sure it spins okay. But anyway, forget testing for now. The thing that's important on the Bendix drive is you'll see these two nuts at the top. You want to make sure these tabs are bent around both of these nuts to hold them in place. Because what you don't want to have happen, remember this is going to be inside the bell housing here when it's mounted on the engine. What you don't, this is all inside, you don't want these to loosen and fall off inside your bell housing, that'd be very bad. So that's what these tabs, these metal tabs here are for, to keep it, uh, these screws from falling out. 
So I think those are, at a high level, those are most of the parts of a Model A starter motor. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is when you take it apart to paint, inside these brushes, sometimes people call them shoes, it's hard to see inside there, but they've got a little spring, they each have a spring, a separate spring to hold them against the commentator. And, <coughs> excuse me, when you take it apart and put it back together, you're gonna need to use a piece of wire or something to kind of lift up the spring and put these, it's hard to see, in, so let me see in there, like that. Those copper, can you see those copper shoes? And there's four of them, and they sit against the part, they sit against this, so they, they sit against here, and this spins around. Uh, but it doesn't just easily slide in once you take it apart, so make sure this is clean, should be shiny surface. Uh, I put a little bit of like, um, like a battery terminal grease on there just to kind of, you know, uh, keep it from corroding. Anyway, as long as it's clean, shiny contact, you should be fine. And the other thing I want to point out before I wrap up the video is you want to make sure that the, this is where it mounts to inside the engine. So that is the bell housing there. And what I did was, uh, and one quick note, whenever you're cleaning or working on anything around here, make sure there's no small parts. You don't want anything to fall in there. Uh, that would be bad. Uh, so when you're sanding here and you want a good connection, just sand enough on the edges here so that uh, it's shiny enough. You should see shiny metal. And as with a Ford Model A engine, anytime you have bare metal, uh, if you're not going to paint it, you don't want to paint this. You want the bare metal for the connection because this is where it gets the ground. Uh, or the positive, I forget. But anyway, you don't want to paint this where it connects. But you could put a little bit of oil or WD-40 or something to protect it. Because it'll uh, if you let it sit for a few days before you put it back on, uh, it will start to rust there. Just like this water inlet here. You can see I sanded this down and cleaned it. A little while ago and you can already see there's uh, some rust so anytime you have bare metal open on your Ford engine uh, make sure on your model engine make sure you protect it or paint it or something don't let it sit too long okay that is all I have today covering the Ford Model A starter motor okay this is the second part of my Model A distributor motor and I have a bit of a cough cold I'm getting over so I apologize I'll be coughing through this segment I wanted to show you how to put it all back together because I thought it was unfair that I have a video showing you how to take it all apart and I did not realize how difficult it would be to get these brushes back on the tip of this uh, commentator uh, it's quite challenging you're gonna have to be patient after trying several ways I don't know if this is the best way or recommended way, but this worked for me, so I'm gonna share it. Uh, what I did was, so the tools you need are, you're gonna need a flathead screwdriver, a good flashlight. This is unfortunately not a good one. It's, but better flashlight than that, at least it's bright. Um, you may or may not need the needle nose pliers. I really. I don't think I use them much at the beginning I try but in the end it didn't really help you will need some wire so let me explain that looks like rope but this is wire the big trick that really helped me kind of make progress is this case and this plate they screw together remember I told you earlier in the video these uh, two long screws they go the length of the case and screw into the plate on the end well before you get that far um, if you don't have these fastened together and that and you can only use this two, and you can't you can't put the screws in first and then put the brushes or the shoes on the uh, plate here it's not gonna work you can't get in there and do both so what I did was I used wire and I tightened it very tightly here and I put it around this uh, I don't know what this is called but this seemed to be like a okay area I didn't nick the wire on the inside there. I was careful not to do that. So it's at the bottom. You can see that one there. 
and I tighten it on these screw holes. So this, these are the holes that go into the bell housing where those nuts go. So I tighten them here. What this does is it keeps the case on this plate. Because if you don't have it on there, what's going to happen is when you're trying to get the brushes, the shoes on, that rotating copper tip on the end, it's going to keep, it's going to drive you crazy. So this helped to make progress. And then I know the, uh, is it that Les Andrews book? The, uh, it talks about using a coat hanger or wire to like pull the springs up as you're putting the shoes, the brushes on. I actually never used this. I tried it a little bit, but let me just show you what I did. So, and I'm not taking it apart again to show you. So <laughs> you'll just have to have a good imagination here. So let me show you one of the shoes. Uh, let's see, how about, uh, no, I can't show you a good one. Let me, uh, well, maybe that one. Okay, so get this out of the way, get the light. So a few tricks. One thing to keep in mind is, maybe I can see without there, yeah. I'm looking right down at one of these copper, these little pieces that ride on this round part here that rotates. This part here is a spring. <clears throat> There's four of these, so four springs hold these. You want to make sure this is centered in the middle of this brush or shoe. You don't want it to the left or right to pinch one of these copper strand wires here. That would be bad. In fact, in general, you don't want to yank or tug on these too hard at all. Uh, earlier, as you're moving things around when they're loose, uh, once in a while I use these needle nose pliers to like slightly position the shoe by grabbing one of these copper strands, but you don't want to pull hard on these. If you disconnect that, you're going to have like even more problems if you do that. So don't do that. I was able to use the flat head of the screwdriver to kind of when this plate is off, it's tight in there now, but when it's loose, you can rotate around here and get in the hole, you can get in this open area if you take the band off. <clears throat> you can take the flat head of the screwdriver and guide each of these four shoes or brushes onto this copper part, but not all the way. You can start the tips. See, what you'll do is you'll start one tip, like right there, then you'll move to the next brush or shoe, and that one's harder to see, but it's like right in there. You'll do that one, and then and you at the same time you're doing this, you have to keep your hand on the top here to keep pressure. Not a, a lot of pressure, but enough pressure so those shoes or brushes don't slip off. So you gotta keep holding on here as you're rotating this. Again, you have to be very patient. You won't get it right the first time. Here's a third one. You'll put that one on there. Again, notice that that spring is right in the middle of the shoe there. So like right there, that's in the middle. It's not up or down. You want to keep it right there in the middle. Uh, and again, I tried, you can use like a coat hanger and bend the wire, like pull the spring up to release some tension as you're moving around. But really, <clears throat> I was able to do it without this. So the simpler, the better, right? And then you go to the fourth one. And when you get all four on, it's going to, like I said, it's going to take a little bit of work, but when you get all four slid on, again, the, the tips end, so you're going to, let me see, this bottom part of the brush or shoe, once you slide all four, you get them aligned over this tip here, then they'll all just slide on. So what you'll do is you'll push down and this will miraculously just slide in and you will be saying your blessings, but you're not quite done yet. You don't want it to fall off. So what you got to do is you got to have this screw ready. So while you're holding this with one hand, you want to take it. Now, one thing I found out, and again, I didn't plan this, there's a screw hole here, but you'll see as soon as I push down, it's hitting my wire, right? It's like, oh no, I can't screw it in. But luckily, I kept one open here. So you'll see this part doesn't have any wire on the inside. So I was able to slide and this one's already in. I was able to slide this in and screw it in and get a connection down here at the plate. So now all I have to do left, I guess I can safely do it now, is take off this wire. Uh, this is a lot of work, folks. And so take off this wire, <clears throat> slide that out. Now what I can do is I can slide this in. Oh, I said it wasn't going to be, let's see, something. 
Oh, yep, that was okay. Just got it in there. And then line it up with the bottom. Well, I can't see it, but I can. what I can do is uh, I can feel the threads catching. So I'll tighten it by hand. That's most the way in. And then you would use your, this is the wrong size screwdriver for this, but you would then get your screwdriver and finish this off. Don't strip these off. This is a pretty large, thick size screwdriver flathead. You want to make sure you get the right size here and not strip it. Anyway, once you do that, then you can put it back into your Model A car. So this, <laughs> this was a lot of work, but I thought it might be worth at least recording a tip that I use. Again, I was able to just use a flathead screwdriver. Good flashlight to see what you're doing. Uh, you may or may not need the needle nose plier to move those copper strand wires a little bit in here. May or may not help. Uh, if you got a coat hanging around the house, you know you can try this to lift up on those spring tensioners and that might help or not. I didn't really need it. But definitely attaching using you know string, a wire, something tight to attach this case to the plate before you start really made the difference. So uh, good luck in all your work on your Model A.